Good morning. Welcome to Windsor Gospel Assembly. We're so glad that you could join us for our Christmas Day service. Please follow us on Facebook or Instagram to know more about us. Now let's worship the Lord together and have a Merry Christmas. celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As we are celebrating Christmas, let us all remember the price that He has paid on the cross. I mean, this morning I was just thinking, what is Christmas without the sacrifice that the Lord has done for us? I mean, the whole reason why He was born among us is so that He can die for us. So this morning as we are celebrating the birth, as we are celebrating the joy that the Lord brings our lives. Let us also remember the price that he has paid on the cross and the resurrection. Let's sing this together. I see his wounds 
his hands, his feet, my savior on the cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears, they lay him down in Joseph's tomb, the entrance healed by heavy stones, Let's sing this together. Oh, praise. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord our God. Oh, praise the 
In the Bible, we read about the birth of Jesus Christ, Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to 16. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. Now, this was the first census that took place while Quirinus was governor of Syria. And everyone went there to register at their own town. So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. So Joseph went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the child to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified. But the angel said to them, Drop the of bread, I bring you good news. And joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born. He is our Messiah, our Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes, lying in a manger. Suddenly, there appeared a company of the heavenly host, which appeared with the angel, singing praises and saying, Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, good and will toward men. Then the angels left and went into heaven, and the shepherds said to themselves, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that the Lord has told us about. So they hurried and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was laying in a manger. For he alone is worthy. For he alone is glorious. For he is Christ the King. He is seated on the throne and we worship him and we adore him for who he is. He is our Redeemer. He is our Deliverer. Hallelujah. Oh, when you look at the throne room worship, you know, you see the 24 elders who are seated on the throne. They fall at the feet of this almighty God, of this holy God. And he, they put their, lay down their thrones and they worship Jesus Christ, the slain Lamb of God and the Lion of the tribe of Judah, along with the four living creatures who are covered all over their body with eyes on the wings and the bodies. They're covered with eyes and they, together with the 24 elders and multitudes of, and multitudes of, angels they worship God and say we adore you Lord Jesus we give you the glory we give you the honor hallelujah so today even as you are worshiping God even as we are celebrating Jesus Christ in this morning hallelujah come on let's just declare that from our hearts we adore you Lord we adore you Lord Jesus for you alone are worthy for you are the King of Kings you are the Almighty God and we have our being in you Lord hallelujah oh we praise and magnify him we give him all the glory and honor hallelujah I thank God for giving us this wonderful opportunity once again on this Sunday morning to come into the presence of a living God what a joy what a privilege and honor that God has bestowed upon us that we could come into his holy presence and to give him all the glory and honor remember we don't have the ability we don't have the strength we are not we are not worthy to even to come and be in his presence but because of his grace the blood of jesus christ that has made a way for you and for me to come into the holy presence of our God Almighty and to worship Him. Praise be to God. I thank God for this morning. Thank God for everyone who has joined us here and who would be probably joining us later viewing this video at a later time. I pray that today even as you take part in this worship and, and listen to the Word of God, you will understand that 
this season, this Christmas is so special because we understand that Emmanuel, God with us, is so much more real during these times. Hallelujah. You know, when you look around us, there's so many who are, who are going through so much of pain and there's so much of uh, uh, struggles in their lives. So many children who are out there in the refugee camps, my heart goes out for them, you know. And, and, and all those families who are displaced because of the pandemic, many who have gone, you know, experiences, losses in their, in their, of their dear ones. Uh, it is very hard. But in the midst of that, you know, we have this beautiful promise, this gift that God, eternal God has given us. He gave us His Son, Jesus Christ, and He is Emmanuel, God with us. And today, even as we continue the series, God with us, you know, I want to share with you, you know, God with us today to overcome the world. Praise be to God. To make us overcome us. To make us, give us the strength and the power and the ability to overcome the world and everything that the world brings that against you and against your against your walk with God and you're, 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 you're running that race that God has called you to do, to run, praise God. So today I want to share with you that God with you to, over, to make you an overcome, to overcome the world that is around you. So First John chapter 4 and verse 4, <clears throat> you read, you know, John is writing in his epistle, to, to to his disciples, to his uh, to the brothers and sisters uh, in, in Christ, you dear children are from God, and have overcome them, the world, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Praise be to God. What a promise! It is such an encouragement when you read this word, and in fact. I declare this word personally every day in the morning when I do my quiet time. I declare the promises of God, believing that it is the word of God and He will bring it to pass. Hallelujah. It is His word and His word will never fail. Hallelujah. So can we pray? Let's pray together and ask the Lord to speak to us, you know, and encourage us and strengthen us that we will understand that Emmanuel, God with us, is to make us overcome us. We are not weak. We have something that is so, so great in us, for we have God with us. Praise God. Shall we pray? Father, I thank you, God, for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful time of worship that you've given us, oh God. Lord, the privilege that you have given us to come in your holy presence and to declare that you are holy, a God. Lord, nothing about us can change that, a God. For you are, it is already established in the eternal, eternal kingdom, Lord, that you are the holy God. And Lord, we thank you, God, for giving us this privilege and giving us the, showing us the grace through the blood of Jesus Christ to come in your holy presence to worship you. Lord, today, all those who are here, who are unable, who are able to come and those who are probably going to view this uh, video later on. I pray that, Lord, you will minister to your people, oh God. Lord, it's not about us. It's not about anyone who is here, oh God, but it is all about you, Jesus Christ. And therefore, I pray that, Lord, you will speak to your people, your word, oh God, that they need to hear from you, from your spirit today. We thank you for the, for the victory and deliverance you're going to give us today, Lord. For yes, we believe that your word is true, O oh God, and it will, it will bring forth the result that you desire in our lives through your word. So Holy Spirit, come and minister to your people. Anoint thy servant to bring your word, O oh God. Fill my mouth with your words, that Lord, your words will bring eternal life to everyone who hears it, Lord. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. And we all said, 
Amen. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. God with us to overcome the world. You know, Liu Chi Kung, who placed second to Van Cleburne in 1948 in the Tchaikovsky competition, was imprisoned a year later during the Cultural Revolution of China. During the entire seven years who he was in the prison, he was denied the use of a piano. But soon after his release, however, he was back on tour. Critics wrote in astonishment that his music was better than ever. How did you do this? A critic asked Liu. You had no chance to practice for seven years in the prison. And Liu answered back, I did practice. Every day I rehearsed every piece I had ever played, note by note, in my mind. You see, <clears throat> doesn't matter seven years in the prison and no piano, but you know, every note that Liu had played was in his mind and he was not going to give up because of the seven years that he has been put in the prison by, by the Chinese government. But he practiced those notes in his mind. In his mind. I mean, a true overcomer, I mean, is unique. You know, they're unique because they're determined and they are focused and they have, they have that passion in them and the desire to do to bring to fruition what that God has put in their heart or the goals that they have placed in their life. Overcomers, they stand out. They're not the ordinary. They stand out because they take up the challenge. They're not going to be feared and, 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 you know, and, and give up. They, are, they will stand out. Third, overcomers are ready to pay a high price. Hey, this is so important. You know, if you want to stand out, if you want to be unique, if you want to achieve something that is really beyond others, you have to overcome a lot of obstacles and that will cost you a high price. An overcomer is willing to pay that high price. You know, you and I, as children of God, when we have faith in Jesus Christ, we are overcomers because we have Emmanuel, God with us, and we are His children. You see, when you have God with you, when you have Jesus Christ, His Word in you, when you are abiding and dwelling in His presence, <clears throat> And when you have the Holy Spirit of the living God in you, you are an overcomer because you are a child of God. Praise be to God. Now, I want you to be, I want you to, you know, set this foundational platform right up front. I want you to understand who you are. You are an overcomer. You are an overcomer. You will not be defeated because you are a child of God. And you are in his eternal plan. Praise be to God. You know, God has an eternal plan which he has already put in place and he will bring it to fruition. When you see in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 to 28, you know, I often go back to that portion because, you know, you, when you start understanding the eternal plan of God in Genesis, then you will understand the entire Bible, praise be to God. You have to understand eternity and God's eternal plan for you and for me. Only then the word of God will actually makes sense to you or when the revelation will come forth you will be able to understand the promises of God and have faith in his word so God's eternal plan was executed in verse 26 to 28 the plan was in verse 26 God said then God said let us make mankind in our image in our likeness 
for what? So that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. You see, this is his plan that he wanted to create human beings, mankind in his own image and in, the, in his own likeness for what? To rule and to reign. With whom? With, with the law, with God. Hallelujah. This is his plan. You are made God in his mind. When he created mankind, his aim was that he would want this man who is in his image and his likeness to rule and reign with him. Praise be to God. Not to be a weakling, not to be defeated, not to be, you know, uh, to be dead but to live in eternity with him, to rule and reign, praise God. So the implementation was in verse 27 of the plan. God created mankind in his own image. Now in 26, he had planned and he declared that his plan. Now in 27, he's actually implementing that plan. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And in verse 28, he confirms that which he has created and he blesses mankind. You know, that is the plan is completely executed. In verse 28, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number praise be to god hallelujah that means you and i we are to increase we are to multiply we are to grow that is the that is the desire of god the plan of god as you and i are created to rule and reign by increasing in with god and in his presence hallelujah Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. So you see, the clear understanding of God's plan that, you know, God created you and me to rule and reign with him. But we know, you know, sin came through disobedience and the fall of the mankind was seen there. It happened because of disobedience. Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. Paul writing to the, the, the church, the, the believers in Rome, he's saying, we were created to reign and rule. And verse 17, for if by the trespass of the one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness, here's a key word, reign in life. How? Through the one man, Jesus Christ. What a promise. I mean, Paul is reiterating and, you know, confirming that which was the eternal plan in Genesis. Know that, yes, through the trespass of one man, the disobedience of God's command and his word was a trespass that Adam, the one man, did in the Garden of Eden. What did that cause? It caused death to what God had planned for reigning with God. So, disobedience to God's command and His word by Adam in the Garden of Eden caused death to reign. However, you see, God's plan has to be executed, will be fulfilled, will be, will be done. And that's why God's creation, although it had become a slave by the trespass of Adam, it had become a slave to sin and death and allowing death to reign now. You see, God restores man to reign through the one man, Jesus Christ. And that is, and his name is Emmanuel, God with us. 
So you see, man received two promises through his presence, through God's presence in his life, through Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ is in you, in your life, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, you know, you have two promises of God. One, God's grace is in you. This is a provision which God has given you and me. It's a provision from God that you did not receive it or by anything that you have done. And it is a grace that means something that you did not deserve. God in his love give you grace as his provision. Praise God. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord, when you accept God to come into your life, praise be to God. It is a provision that means it's essential to reign. It's, you, cannot, you cannot reign unless you have this grace of Jesus Christ or Emmanuel in your life. Without Jesus, you cannot do anything. You are dead. You have death reigning in you. Because Jesus Christ is a life. In John chapter 1, and you know, you read there, he said, life was in him. He came to give you life so that the death that was reigning in you will be gone, will be defeated. You have to understand this. So the provision of grace was given to you and me through Jesus Christ. Secondly, God's righteousness, which is a gift. That's what you read in Romans chapter, you know, uh, uh, Romans chapter 5 and verse 17, you know. For if by the trespass of the one man death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace? I mean, this abundant provision of grace is for all without limit. Wow, praise be to God. Can you imagine that? It's abundantly available for you and for me and for anyone who desires it. And of the gift of of righteousness you know of God through life the one man Jesus Christ hallelujah so God's righteousness this is a gift you did not earn it it was a gift you see gifts you don't earn any gifts right it is out of someone's love and desire to give you he gives you a gift or she gives you a gift because of the love and the and 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 that they, they want to express that love through this gift and God expresses his love for you by giving his righteousness through Jesus Christ because these are the two promises you receive that you need to reign with him praise be to God you know when you look at pro the prodigal son you will see you know he was with the father but when he came into the right mind he had this you know he when he came into the right mind he turned back and he came to the father and the father showed him grace and in his love restored him completely made him right with the father praise be to god even though he did not deserve it he himself acknowledged it that I, didn't des I don't deserve to be a son anymore. I would rather be like one of the servants. But the father, you know, made him right. It got, restored his standing with the father right and gave him this gift of righteousness to be his son. Hallelujah. This is what, you know, you and me, when we understand Emmanuel, you know, we have the grace of God through Jesus Christ, at the cross, he showed the grace that he died for you and for me. So today, if there's anyone who is listening to me, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ, you've got to understand this. God's grace is available for you today that you 
have to understand that you if you don't have Jesus Christ you are in you are actually allowing death to reign in your life but Jesus Christ can come and give you victory over death he can give you this life he can give you the God's grace and the righteousness of God to make you right with God to become a child of God to become a son of God so today I'm giving you this invitation if you do not have this relationship with Jesus Christ why don't you accept him why don't you invite him tell him God I need you I need you to deliver me from my sin and from this death that is reigning in my life I want life through you Jesus just come into my life I give you my life I am a sinner I need you to come and deliver me and give me life would you do that today he will come he will save you and you will be a child of God praise be to God <clears throat> in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 9 to 10 when you read you know you see Paul again is writing in his letter to you know to the church in Colossae that a complete restoration of the loss is only through Christ Jesus only through Christ Jesus not by anything that you can do not anything that you know you can achieve by your ability or your actions the loss that has come in your life the fullness of God that was in you when God created you, which was lost, God restores that fullness in you through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It was nine. For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. And in, in, in Christ, you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. Wow, I mean, this is just so awesome. You know, the creator of the universe, you know, the, the, the entire universe and everything that you see was created by his word. I mean, the stars and the galaxies and, and everything that you see was created by this God. And this God, you know, came and became a human being, took a bodily form. Hallelujah. I mean, if you think about it, it just, you will not be able to understand and comprehend how could it be, Lord, that this God of all universe, everything, he became he took a bodily form and you read that in 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 uh, you know Philippians chapter 2 you know that God became man and not only just a man he, he took the form of a born servant hallelujah I mean a, a complete you know uh, uh, humility that you see that God he could have chosen to be a king he could have Born as a king, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a palace. But he was born in a manger and he took the form of a, of, a, of a servant, a born servant. And he was obedient unto death. Hallelujah. You see, God and the complete, the fullness of the deity as of God lives in the bodily form. This is what is God with us. This is Emmanuel. We have to understand this. God in as a, as you know in in the fullness of His deity, as God with all His power and with all His authority, with all His you know greatness, with all His holiness, lived in a bodily form like you and me in here here on the earth because he wanted to make a way for you and me to be our savior to be our eternal king hallelujah and in christ you have been brought to fullness so when you you know when you accept jesus christ into your life when we have christ god with us in you you achieve the fullness that God had.
created you. You know, when I was sharing the other day with, with a sister that, you know, in Psalm 139, God created you and formed you in your mother's womb, fearfully and wonderfully in its fullness. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, when God does something, he does it perfect. No matter what you are, cha- no matter what you're struggling with, remember one thing, God, you created me and you have made me in the fullness because I have Christ in me. Praise God. And that is what the word of God said. Why? Because he is the head over all the power and authority. Praise be to God. Amen. Creator of the universe, the God of infinity, God, the source of all power, became flesh and took a bodily form for you and for me in love. Therefore, we have his power and authority through His Word and His Holy Spirit in us. Praise be to God. You have to understand this. When you, you know, when you acknowledge God's presence in your life, in His whole deity, He has given you the authority and power. And that's why in Luke 10, 19, you know, Jesus Christ, He declares that to you. He gave us His authority and power to rule and reign. He says, I give, I have given you authority. Praise be God. See, I have given you or it's not like I will give you. It is already given. Praise be to God. When you accept Jesus Christ into your life, he has already given you his authority. Praise God. To trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of of the enemy praise be to God hallelujah because he is the source of all power his name is above all names he has all authority given to him in heaven and in earth and everything under the earth his name is above all names. when you have Jesus Christ in you when you are abiding in his word when you have his spirit in you praise be to God amen Luke 10, 19 becomes real in your life. Praise be to God. Come on. You got to declare it upon your life. No matter what the enemy is challenging you with. No matter what the doctor's report may say. Praise God. No matter what your children are struggling with. Hallelujah. No matter what your marriage is struggling with. No matter how your finances look like. Praise be to God. Doesn't matter. You have the authority of Jesus Christ in you. You, wouldn't you exercise that he says no and that all overcome all the power of the enemy nothing will harm you praise be to God this is the word of God this is the word of God and he has declared and he has given you the victory today praise be to God you know Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 to 12 you know he, he, he you know we learn very clearly uh, uh, that you know there that we are in a spiritual battle when we have accepted Jesus Christ and when we have his authority and power you know guess what you are in the battlefield to destroy to the wicked you're not on a defensive God has given you the strength and authority for what to win souls for you for what in you see in the day of Pentecost he told you wait for the power from above for what to become witnesses for Jesus Christ that you will be witnesses for him here in this city here in the city where you are at God is giving you his authority and power to win souls to intercede for many who are perishing. It is not just for you to feel good. Not just for you to just sit down and, you know, and, 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 to, and to be the holy, holy. No, it is for you to go out there and to win souls and reach out and do what God had commanded us to do. His great commission is to go and make disciples, not to sit and make disciples, not to sit in your couch and and to feel comfortable and just keep reading and becoming spiritually so bloated, totally, utterly useless. But God said, go and make disciples. Hallelujah. And that he is with you. 
Lo, I am with you at for all the time. Praise be to God. What a promise. Hallelujah. In Ephesians 6, 7, verse 10 and 12, His strength and power gives you the victory. His strength and His power. Finally, be strong. Verse 10, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's scheme. Praise be to God. Finally, be strong. First, our strength is in our God. It is not in you. Not, not in, in, in your ability or your eloquence in, 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 in your prayer life or you know, your prayers are long and, and, uh, and eloquent or your, your preaching. It doesn't matter. Your strength is in God. And our power is from God. He is the source. He is sovereign. He is sovereign. Praise be to God. And our safety is from God. Amen. We need to put the full armor of whose? Of God. It's not your armor. You can't just put whatever you feel like. You know, oh yeah, this is not the way I want to do it. This is not the way I feel, you know, the, the helmet should be. No, God's full armor. God has given you his armor. You put it on fully. Not what you feel like and not don't feel like. You know, we are so, we become so smart sometimes. You know, we, we try to teach God and try to, you know, uh, let him know, you know, maybe there's a mistake. You know, I don't need the belt of truth. I can do without the belt of truth. No, the whole thing will fall off. Praise God. When you reach the battlefield, you know, your breastplate is hanging loose and your helmet is about to fall and your sword is about to fall. The, bre the, tr the belt of truth puts it all together. You know, so we have to put the full armor of God. You know why? So that you can stand against the enemy, that you can go into the battlefield and stand. This enemy is not to be taken lightly. Who is your enemy? Verse 12. For our struggle is not against the flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. You have to understand this. You might think, you know, why is my children not behaving? Why aren't they listening to me? It is not because they don't love you, but because they are exposed to the these heavenly, uh, the, the spiritual forces of evil that are influencing their thought processes. So we need to go against those spiritual forces. We need to stand against our, uh, the forces that are attacking and influencing our children, our spouses, our spiritual leaders, our government leaders, our leaders of our nation. It is these spiritual forces of evil that are influencing their decisions. So we need to stand against these who are in the heavenly realm. So you got to understand that this enemy is not to be taken lightly. You need to put on the full armor of God and you have to be strong in God and you have to be receiving the power from God to win, overcome this battle. And verse 18, prayer is the key or to winning spiritual battles. I tell you, I mean, without prayer, you cannot win spiritual battles. You need to pray and pray in the spirit. Verse 18, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Praying in the spirit. Is so important. You need to understand when you pray in the spirit, you are connected with the heavenlies. Praise be to God. And the Lord will bring you, give you the revelation and, and, the, and his schemes to win over the enemy. Praise be to God. You need to pray. You know, when you, when you, if you look around, you know, when you call for prayer, that is the most difficult thing. Even in our families, you know, how many of us, how many of our families, we get together every day to pray together. It says, you know, there's a cliche, a family that prays together stays together. It's so true. A church that prays together will stay together. There will be unity. There will be strength. There will be power. And there will be victory in your family. 
So if you don't have these family prayers, family altars, I encourage you, you have to take a stand. Come on, husbands, you are the spirit, you are the head of the family. You need to take the stand. You need to take the leadership in that. Call your family, call your children. Everything else can wait. Let them come together, pray, pray together because we have a spiritual battle. Praise God. Why pray in the spirit? The battle is spiritual and must be fought in God's strength. You got to understand, we don't, our battle is not against flesh and blood. But it's spiritual. So therefore you need to depend. Must be fought in God's strength. We have to be depending on his word. And depending fully on God through prayer. You know just like you see in David's life. He always would go to God. You know and get his strength from him. From his word. And ask God of his, his directions. We need to be like that. When we, have, when we are children of God, when we have God with us, Emmanuel, God with us, we know that we have access to our God, that we can pray to Him in His, in His Spirit and hear from Him what we need to do. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Three characteristics of an overcomer. And, and, and I'm going to close here. You know, a child of God. I mean, when you are a child of God, you will, you know, these three characters will stand out. First, it's confirmed through John 16, 33. You'll understand that you are from God, that God is in you. I have told you these things, verse 33 of John 16, so that in me, you may have peace. In me, you may have peace. It is only through Jesus Christ, only in Jesus, your peace even exist. Amen. So that's why you see, you know, in families, you need to have Jesus Christ. When you have Jesus Christ in the middle of your family, hallelujah, there will be peace. If you take away Jesus Christ out of that equation, you will not have peace. It's simple as that. Bring Jesus into your life. Bring Jesus into your marriage. Bring Jesus into your family. Bring Jesus into your children. Bring Jesus into your relationships. You will have peace. Praise be to God. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Praise be to God. Hey, I'm reminded of the 400 meters hurdles. I, I was a hurdler when I was growing up in my university. You know, and I used to do, I was good at it. And I won uh, competitions but I remember when I was studying this part you know I thought of one of the most difficult races one of the most difficult uh, athletic events is 400 meters hurdles you know but here's the thing you know you have these hurdles and when you are training these you know for these races you know in your mind that you know what I have to cross these hurdles and therefore you train accordingly your strides and your race that these hurdles don't become a hurdle anymore it is actually a, a, a bigger stride in your running that's how you train you see same way in your life we will have struggles we will have challenges the enemy will bring challenges but you know what we will overcome it because we know already that we have to face these challenges that it will not be a surprise oh i'm running oh whoa, i didn't expect this hurdle no i am trained i know exactly how to grow over this hurdle you know what the best thing are uh, in that if you have a coach who has already who is already an Olympian or he's won national awards in, in this event. I mean, then you have nothing to worry, praise God, because here is a person who's teaching you how to win this and across these hurdles and run this race because he has already won it. Exactly how Jesus Christ is an overcomer. He overcome it. He won it. And he said on the cross, it is finished. That's why he's saying you can overcome because I have overcome it. Hallelujah. I have overcome the world. Praise be to God. Amen. You know, we have Jesus Christ who is not, you know, he, he will not tell you to do something which he has not done. That's why I'm telling you, this is the secret. He became flesh that he could win and win everything that you will face. 
he has won it and that's why he said it is finished that it is won he has won victory over everything now you can overcome because he has overcome Emmanuel second thing second character of an overcome or a child of God is that God is with you Romans 8 31 and and verse 37 you see what then shall we say you know Paul is writing shall we say in response to these things if God is for us who can be against us can anyone be against us because God is with us you and I we got to understand that we got to understand that if God is with me, who can be against us? And he goes on to say in verse 37, no, in all these things, all these challenges, all these, you know, spiritual battles, remember one thing, that we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Praise God. It's all about him, guys. It's all about him, folks. Nothing about you. That's why John said, I must decrease and he should increase. I must decrease and he should increase. Because we are more than conquerors through him, through Jesus Christ, through Emmanuel, God with us, who loved us. And finally, he who is in you is greater than the one in the world and that you see you know in second kings chapter 6 and verse 16 a beautiful example you know or if you understand if you have this the 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 the, the, the spiritual revelation of god with us you know just like how elisha prayed god you open the eyes of my servant to see you and your provision hallelujah hey, the, the the king of aram sent you know chariots and horses to capture elisha but you know what praise be to god elisha when he prayed and when the servant's eyes was open he saw that i mean the entire mountain was covered with chariots of fire covering and protecting elisha for greater is he is who is in you than the one in the world when we understand this you know you will realize that you know i am an overcomer i don't have fear hallelujah praise be to god in in Acts chapter 14 and verse 3 you know when we have god with us and when we declare his word when we speak his word god in his word and he will confirm that he will confirm that that it is the truth it has the power it has this god has it is his word and he he will bring forth the the, the fruit that he desires praise be to god you know in uh, when paul and barnabas when they were in uh, in a place called iconium and they were they were preaching the word of god declaring the truth Amen. With boldness. So Paul, in verse, verse 3, 3 of Acts chapter 14, he says, Paul and Barnabas spent considerable time there, where in Iconium, speaking boldly for the, for the Lord. And what did God do? God confirmed, who confirmed the message of His grace by enabling them, Paul and Barnabas, to perform signs and wonders you see when you are declaring when you are exalting Jesus Christ when you are declaring boldly his word when you are declaring the gospel of Jesus Christ hallelujah God in his power God in his anointing upon your life will enable you to perform signs and wonders Praise be to God. So I want you to understand when you are with God or when God is with you, when you are experiencing his presence in your life, you need to declare the word of God. But you need to declare the word. If you have to declare the word of God, you need to know the word of God. You need to understand the word of God. You need to, to live the word of God. So that's why I say be rooted in the word. Be rooted in the word because it is life it is the power of god it is a power of god the word of god is a power of god it has the power to heal 
It has a power to deliver. So whatever that you are facing today, every fear that is in your life, if you in your heart the, about your future, about your children, about your finances, about your business, about your marriage, here the word of God will do miracles. The word of God will do miracles. It has a power to to give you the victory because you are an overcomer. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. In Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11, you know, it is, uh, uh, you know, John, you know, in his, in his revelation, he's, you know, he's hearing this song, you know, they triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb. Praise be to God. And by the word of their testimony, they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. You see, you and I, we have the power of God. We are the blood of Jesus Christ that has all the power to overcome the accuser of the brethren. If you read in verse 10, you know, you overcome him because he is always there to accuse you. He is always there to accuse your brother. Hallelujah. But we will overcome him by the blood of the Lamb. Praise be to God. It is not by your strength or because of your anything that you can say that you have achieved. Nothing will stand but only the blood of Jesus Christ. Emmanuel, God with you, makes you to reign and rule with him. Praise God. So today, I want to ask you, as you're listening to me, and I know that the Holy Spirit has been ministering to you, are you struggling? And do you feel defeated? And you feel that I have no strength in me, God? You know, I feel so weak. I'm so drained out. You know, this life and its toil. I'm so tired. I can't move forward. I am not able to think right. I believe God is going to speak to you. God has already spoken to you and He is going to deliver you. He is going to give you, you know, His power and strength is going to come if you will stand up and you will receive it in faith. Praise be to God. I believe there's someone of you sitting there right now listening to this word that you're feeling this in your heart. You're drained out. You're weak. Maybe you have lost the first love. You know, the first love that you had for Jesus Christ. And, and, and now you're not able to pray and you're not able to read the word. You got so many distractions. You're easily distracted. You know, and, 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 and uh, it's like, that word that has fallen in the ground which, and the thorns have, you know, uh, grown around that word and now you're not able to grow in the word. Is that you? Submit to God today. Say, Lord, I am backslidden. I'm not able to pray, Lord. I'm not able to read your word. I don't have that love for you anymore, God. I need it back. I want you to come. Emmanuel, God, you be with me. Change me. Is that you? God is going to change you today. Praise be to God. Do you want to be an overcomer in Jesus Christ? Because we heard today that God is with you to enable you to overcome the world. Only through Jesus Christ, because he has overcome this world and he will make you an overcomer through the blood of Jesus Christ. So shall we pray. Father, I thank you, God, for this wonderful time you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us. Holy Spirit, we know, God, that without you, we are nothing. And today, thank you, Lord God, for speaking to us. Lord, we need you, God. We need you. I need you, Father. Come, oh God. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Lord Jesus Christ, into my life. I need your strength. I need your power. I need you to make me an overcomer, God. That I will overcome this world. I will overcome these challenges. I will overcome the enemy with your blood, with your word, with your anointing power. Thank you for doing that, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise God. Hey, if you have believed that, if you have prayed that prayer, 
I want you to believe that God is bringing that change in you. There is a change right now you're experiencing in your heart today. You are an overcomer because God is with you. Praise be to God. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, love of God the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you now and forevermore. Amen. Praise be to God. Be blessed. Be safe. Have a wonderful week ahead. And I know the Christmas week is coming up. Christmas day is coming up. There are a lot of gifts that you want to open up. Have a wonderful time with your family. God bless you. Remember, in Jesus Christ, you are an overcomer. God bless you. See you next week. Singing